what's up guys so today i'm doing a video on how to tame your gerbil daisy's actually hiding away in her hidey house at the moment might be kind of hard to see her because of how the uh, plastic glass thingy base thing is so to start off you're going to want to have your gerbil's cage somewhere where it's not too loud where it scare them because of course they're prey animals but not somewhere too quiet that you hardly ever go to and hardly ever interact with them daisy's just come up the top here and also if you have other pets such as dogs or any predators you may want to wash your hands so that you get off any smells of them so that you don't scare them when you first get your gerbil you're going to want to let them settle in for a day to two days or maybe even a week depending on what your gerbils like so that they have time to settle in and so that as soon as they come to this random place that they have no idea where it is and then suddenly a hand comes in and like starts picking them up and everything that might just freak them out quite a bit so when you start taming your gerbil you'll just want to sit around the cage and just do things as part of everyday life so that they get used to you being around them you could do things like go on a computer go on your phone do homework if you're at school you can even watch telly if they're in a room where the telly is but don't make it too loud because it might scare them just do something that's part of your everyday life and they'll just slowly get used to you being around them so I would recommend doing that for about two days. For the next two days, uh, just put in your hand into the cage. And when you do this, you want to be slow that you don't startle them. And if they come up to you, don't move at all. Just keep your hand there. Let them come up to you, sniff you, walk over your hand. And just to realise that you're not a threat to them. So I would recommend doing that for about two to three days, depending on how your gerbil takes to it. I would recommend start stroking them. So just put your hand in there and when they come over to you just move your finger just a little bit to try and stroke them. This might startle them a bit because they're used to just walking up to you and you not moving but then they've got to get used to you moving around a bit more around them. So now they'll realise that when you touch your gerbil it's not a threat to them. And then I would recommend doing this for about two days. So next it's time to start hand feeding your gerbil. You'll want to get different treats such as sunflower seeds or other types of seeds or just anything that gerbils like and just offer it to them. Don't force it onto their face, just let them come to you. But make it in a distance where they can actually see it, not like behind them because then they won't even see it. This will get them to realise that you give them food and that you're like good to them, you like feed them. I'd recommend doing this for about two to three days. done that it's time to start picking them up now they may or may not like this don't forget that gerbils are prey animals and being picked up all of a sudden could feel like I don't know like a bird of prey picking them up or like a fox or something so you do want to be careful with them never ever ever pick them up by the tail sure people have done this and you'll say oh yeah I've done it and it doesn't hurt my gerbil but you don't really want to take the risk that's also another reason not to have wire wheels because like their tail will get trapped in it whilst it's moving and in the wild, when a predator grabs them, they'll often grab them by the tail. And to defend themselves, gerbils will drop their tail and just lose it completely. And they don't grow back, I don't think, anyway. And then they can start, like, trying to eat, like, where their, like, all the stuff where their tail was. It's not very nice, basically. You don't want your gerbil to lose its tail. So when picking up your gerbil, it's the same pretty much with, like, a hamster or a mouse or any other animal like that. You just use your hands just to scoop them up. So on the floor, just go like that and scoop them up. So you'll want to be slow with this because you don't want to startle them like with suddenly coming out of this place that they've been living in for the past week. When you pick them up, maybe offer them treats so that they associate being picked up with a good thing. Or when it's like playtime and they go into a pen with, I don't know, lots of toys and they'll associate that with a good thing. So with playtime in a pen, lots of toys, that comes on to my next step. This is quite a good way in taming your gerbil. Make the rules of it high enough so that if your gerbil tries to jump out they don't escape and then hurt themselves and stuff. But make sure that they have plenty of space to stretch their legs and run around and play. This will get them to be more confident, you know, with moving around and like coming up to you a bit more because you'll be sitting in there with them. And just let them climb over you really. Don't like go up to them, just let them climb over you. But then if they really enjoy it maybe you can just kind of move your hand over to them. And you could do this once a week or once every other week or however often you want to. 
This bit you don't really need to do, but it can kind of help. So I must admit, I didn't follow these steps when we got Daisy and her sister Maisie, who's now dead, unfortunately. We just kind of picked her up every day just to get her used to being handled, and now she really likes it. So you can do that, but I must admit that those steps are probably a better way than just going in and picking them up. But we got Daisy about two years ago and I didn't really know much about gerbils then. I knew much about hamsters because I used to have a hamster. But they are kind of similar, but I didn't really look into how to take them. So this may or may not work with every gerbil. Each gerbil is different. Some might be really confident and outgoing, just like my bearded dragon mojo, and might just be really settled in and tame as soon as you get them. But then again, they might be really shy, always hiding away, barely even eating, not doing anything, and might take months to tame. Both Daisy and Maisie were really tame, really, so they're all good. So thank you for watching this video. I know you were mostly just looking at Daisy's cage, but most of the time she was in places where you couldn't even see her. So thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe down below. So see you next time. Bye!